I'd like to do in this session of Look at the Book is ask, what can we learn from John's epistles about the Antichrist? And what I mean is, let's, let's multiply as many insights as we can get about this theme just from John's letters. And the point is that it's good to zero in on an author and a group of books and limit ourselves to that. And then once we've maximized what we can learn from from John in these letters, then move on, say, to Paul or to other parts of the Bible like Matthew 24 and do the same thing there and then see how they cohere with each other and then insights can multiply from there. So that's that's the goal. Let's Let's go ahead and pray, and then because I've got about four or five texts, because uh, John uses the term Antichrist four times in his letters. So, Father, uh, this is a big, a startling, um, a serious, and in one sense, a very dangerous and lamentable topic, and we need your help to get it right from your word, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So there are, there are four times, and you'd know this by simply looking up Antichrist in a concordance, uh, four times in his three epistles. And we're going to look at each of those four and summarize it at the end. Children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. Therefore, We know it is the last hour. They went out from us. So they, namely these many antichrists, were part of us for a while. But they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might become plain that they were not of us. I think I'll take that text in another session of look at the book separately. So here we see... There are um, many of them, and we see that they uh, signify that it's the last hour. So uh, when when Antichrists appear, they are so somehow tied up with the final figure of Antichrist that you know that this hour is tied up with the last hour. And they are called Antichrist. So the Antichrist is coming. They are called Antichrists. What does that mean? Does it mean against Christ, like we say anti-aircraft guns? Or does it mean in place of Christ, like this warning from Jesus, many will come in my name saying, I am he. And they will lead many astray. That we usually think of as this same group. So the word anti here, the preposition anti in Greek can mean in the place of. In fact, it usually does. So this could mean in the place of or it could mean against. Let's let's let John decide instead of us trying to decide. Let's go ahead and look at these four. And I think we'll know by the end which one he intends, against Christ or in place of Christ. And... um, The big question for Lot is, how does the Antichrist relate to these many Antichrists? Because some say these many Antichrists are are the Antichrist in corporate manifestation so that there is no individual Antichrist yet to come. Now, we're going to have to ask, is that so? And we ask it by, and we'll try to answer it by looking at those other, other texts. And the the last thing we can say maybe from this text is they went out from us, which means they once were of us. Next usage, chapter 2, verse 22. Who is the liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, he who denies the Father and the Son. So here again, the Antichrist He's referring to these liars, these people who deny 
that the father is the son are the Antichrist. So that could, again, give an indication that the corporate group is the final Antichrist, or it might mean they somehow have the essence of Antichrist or the spirit of Antichrist. Let's, let's wait and see whether other texts clarify which it is. They are liars. They deny that Jesus is the Christ. This would be a typical Jewish statement. Jesus is not the Christ. That's an Antichrist statement. They deny the Father and the Son. So Jesus is not the Son of God. The Father does not have a Son, Jesus. Next text, chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus has come in the flesh, Jesus has come in the flesh, is from God. Yes, yes. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus, confess Jesus, and presumably this confess Jesus is the same as this confession, only denies it, confess that Jesus has come in the flesh. They do not confess Jesus, that is, they deny the incarnation, is not from God. This is the spirit of, the Antich- of Antichrist. Now, that's a pretty strong statement, it seems to me, that we have a real Antichrist coming, and these folks have the spirit of that Antichrist. These folks are not replacing the Antichrist, but have the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now in the world. So there is a a group of forerunners, you might say, of the Antichrist who have the spirit of Antichrist that have have come. Last text, 2 John 1, 7. Many deceivers have gone out into the world. Those who do not confess, do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. Such one is the deceiver and the antichrist. So there it is again. They, they don't like the doctrine that Jesus Christ is the incarnate, incarnate flesh, son of God. The Messiah has come from God in the flesh and they are resistant to that, and this is the heart of the doctrinal content of Antichrist. And they are deceivers, and they are, um, what else do we see here? Oh, they're, they've gone out into the world, so evidently they're pretty widespread. So let's, let's, go and try to just sum it all up. How many things can we say about the Antichrist? The Antichrist, uh, first, they are called Antichrists, these people. Two, they are here now. Now, many Antichrists have come. They are through the world, throughout the world. They're not just a local phenomenon. Four, there are many of them. Now, many antichrists have gone out into the world. They are liars, deceivers, two words he uses to describe them. So they're going to be deceitful. You're going to be taken off guard by them. They deny... um, that Jesus, Jesus is the Christ. Seven, they deny the incarnation. He didn't come in the flesh. They deny the Son and the Father. So there is no God who's the Father of an incarnate Son. There is no Son who's the incarnate reality of God in heaven. Nine, they have the spirit of Antichrist. So they're not Antichrist, but they have the spirit of Antichrist. Ten, they um, are Christ opposers. In John's view, opposers, not so much replacers. John puts no emphasis 
on substituting themselves for Christ, but all on denying the reality of Christ and opposing him. And in that sense, they, you might say, stand in his place because they preempt his reality. They are forerunners of the Antichrist. And they show it is the last hour. And when you think about how that might be, think about the way they relate to the Antichrist. They are forerunners, anticipations of the final Antichrist, and so they are forerunners and anticipations of the last hour. So you can say that the Antichrist is here in his forerunners, and you can say that the last hour is here in this day. And all of that we should take very seriously because we still live in that last day, and these people are still in the church and going out from the church regularly around the world.